Welcome back to In the Can. We're going to be talking about the film Chasing Ice and director Jeff Orlowski and the subject of the film, James Baylog, are here to talk about it. Thank you both for coming in. It's exciting to have the two of you here. Uh, pleasure. What a privilege. Thank you. Thanks, Lindsay. So this film, a lot of people are talking about it. I mean, a lot of people are really excited about it. We've had a great um, lineup of, do of uh, documentary filmmakers here today, so it's been exciting to kind of have this mm -hmm. running throughout the day today, and this is a perfect ending because this is a film that um, is an incredible story not only about what you're actually talking about with the uh, melting ice but how this film was made is just incredible so it's thank you yeah it, it's, it's been so five exciting. years of following this guy around and going to Greenland and Iceland and Alaska and just documenting a story um, he installed over 30 cameras all around the world to capture what's what's going on with the ice all around mm -hmm. the world and uh, we hope we did justice to, to what's going on with the story right. I think one of the most persistent persevering human beings I've ever met is sitting on the couch say, next to you. I was going to say, after you <laughs> is him, right? Because you actually, you went, you heard about, you obviously have heard about, like we all have, about, um, you know, the, the ice receding and melting away. And did I read correctly that when you first started this, you were a little skeptical of it really happening? Well, I was skeptical about it back in the 90s. By the, in the time 90s. I was on this project, I knew that there was climate okay. change. And I believed that the story would turn out to be in the ice, but I wasn't quite sure how to do that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, step by step, year after year, brought us to the time lapse uh, work, and uh, you know, the rest is history. So you you started out just taking photographs because you you are a renowned and very talented photographer. You started taking photographs. Did you ever think this would be a film, or where did you find? Because you you spent a lot of time putting these cameras into place. What was your intention? Well, I, I always knew that uh, given all these different places we were going, there had to be some kind of a film in there, but I didn't know what, and I didn't know how the story would play out. I, did, I had no idea really what we would get on the cameras, mm -hmm. and I thought, no, I, I, maybe, maybe in three years we'll see something, or maybe it's going to be ten. We don't really know. Mm -hmm. And then, all of a sudden, we started seeing huge results in just yeah. a matter of a few months, and then it was really clear, oh my God, somehow this has to be videotaped and turned into a film because there's a story here right. for sure. And right. again, I don't know what the story arc is going to be and where it'll go and what's going to happen, but something's out there yeah. on the other end of a few years of this process. And Jeff was astute enough to pick up on the potential of that mm -hmm. and decide that he wanted to uh, make a film about right. it. Right. Just to add what, to what James was saying, like we started getting images back from the time lapse cameras in the first six months or so. We saw a rapid change happening on some of the glaciers, mm -hmm. but that was only six months. I mean, that was the summer. And so, what did that change mean? We weren't really sure. We had to wait, and after a full year, we had a full cycle. But we, it was really wanting the evidence of the time lapses themselves to be able to represent, you know, accurately, scientifically, a multiple mm -hmm. year span. And that's where the story really started to solidify as we could tell. You know, this is what's going on with the planet. So let's take a quick look at um, the film. Do you know what we're going to see in this clip? Oh, I'm not sure. What I have no idea, yeah. actually. Okay, well then yeah. we'll, we'll find out together. Um, I think they just need to get the, the clip queued up. So um, going back to, you know, when you, when you realize that a film like this is going to take so much energy, time, money, logistics, everything that's involved, do you... Do you feel like it, it needs to create change to make it worth it? I mean, are you, is that what your goal is, is to create change? Um, there are a couple ways to answer that question. Uh, first off is that had I known how much time and energy <laughs> you it might would have taken, it would have been a very different process. If you know ignorance, what beast was around yes, the corner, you wouldn't turn the corner. Ignorance was bliss in this scenario <laughs> quite a bit. But um, we've already gotten feedback. We did a volunteer screening last week, mm -hmm. and kind of my team out here at Sundance, I've heard that there were six volunteers who came up to my team and said, that their opinion of climate change completely shifted after seeing our film. Wow. And that, I mean, that is a vote of confidence for us and a vote of encouragement that, you know, we're on the right path for doing mm -hmm. what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if the end goal is to create change. I, I think the goal is to change perception and to, um, to really help educate people as to what's going on. Um, and if political change can happen as a result of that, we would consider that a huge success. Let's talk quickly about the team that helped mm -hmm. put this together. I mean, amazing writers, amazing producers, everybody. And, and we've had, you know, the producers here um, <clears throat> before at Sundance with The Cove, right. um, the Tillman story. Exactly. I mean, what a great, great team and, to pull this together. And I think that was the reality of how the film came to be what it is. Um, I recognized at the beginning that I was a young filmmaker 
and I didn't have the experience of making an awesome feature documentary. So I just tried to surround myself mm -hmm. by the best people possible. Mm -hmm. And we built a team of producers, the writers, editors, that we knew would be able to support me, that I, mm -hmm. I felt could support right. me to turn it into a reality. And you must have felt a little bit of ownership about this and handing it perhaps over to a filmmaker. Was that a little tough for you? Well, not really, because um, I got tired of managing the, the so film crews that were out there in the beginning mm -hmm. shooting, shooting with us as we were traveling. I, you know, that was sort of my involvement in the filmmaking side of it. It was just right at the start to get the first material uh, in the can. Mm -hmm. I knew if we didn't shoot the beginning of the project, we wouldn't have enough supporting material to, to, right. to support the story at the end of the project. So, so I made sure that we had uh, some good cameramen and, and sound guys out there in the beginning. And then it was like, oh man, I've had enough of this. I can't right. take it anymore. And Jeff said, Let, give me the chance well, to make a film. It was and the I right, think there's a story here. It was the right move because here you are at Sundance and I'm so excited to get to talk with you. And people are excited to see the film. Unfortunately, we have got to wrap the show. So we're oh. just going to say goodbye for In the Can right now. But thank you all for joining us and we'll be back tomorrow.